you start turning it to the right, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and then um, that way you can slowly kind of work your hands out to the end of the torque wrench and give it a proper um, pull to achieve torque. All righty. So I have been watching like every video on what happened at Carowinds Fury 325. Um, I do know that it is a lot more serious than I made it out to see him on the podcast last night. Um, but I also do know that when it comes to this specific incident, um, I do have a lot of understanding of what's going on. Um, due to the aspect that my channel covers on Canada's Wonderland, I've been really fortunate to gain some connections with a lot of construction companies in Ontario, whether that be surveying, construction, welding, um, all the jazz, I have definitely gained a lot of knowledge and and have the connections to reach out and figure out what possibly went wrong and what could possibly be at fault for what occurred at Carowinds. I'm going to give you guys my two cents, but please understand that nothing is factual. The only people that are going to know what's going on is Cedar Fair, Carowinds the park itself, and the people surveying the ride currently uh, to figure out what had happened. Um, but I guess I want to touch on a couple of things personally. So there's been a lot of hate coming um, towards Cedar Fair and needing a bigger maintenance budget and not doing the maintenance that is required and them not necessarily being one of the best chains for maintenance. Um, in today's video, I'm actually going to prove that wrong. So for those of you that don't know, maybe, maybe there's a lot of new people watching this video that don't know this channel, I cover construction at Canada's Wonderland, and that means I fly my drone almost daily when there's a construction project going on. And because of that, because there was a new coaster and a new first of the kind flat ride this season, I flew my drone every day in spring before the park opened. And I got to capture a lot of preventative maintenance done on a lot of their attractions, if not all. And I have the proof and it's gonna be in today's video. So I'm gonna insert the video footage of Wonderland because my home park isn't Carowinds. I can only use another Cedar Fair Park, Canada's Wonderland as an example of them doing their due diligence in terms of maintenance and really taking care of the rides. Um, so I trust that Carowinds does the same thing because if Wonderland does it, it's definitely, um, a principle and rule that the chain just follows as a whole. It wouldn't it wouldn't make any sense that another park, especially a top five park, wouldn't follow the same rules and guidelines that Cedar Fair has set out that Wonderland would. Um, and, and if that is the case, then it is definitely on Carolyn's fault and not Cedar Fair's fault. Um, and there will be consequences. And I know that there will be consequences if that is the case. But there are other situations at play here that could have led to this um and the fact that this fracture was there um that we know of for about a week before being discovered by i think a guest um but yeah so this footage that i'm showing you as starting now is all filmed this spring and my viewers can confirm that i ain't playing like two years worth of footage this is this year all done. So here is another BNM, similar to the ride that um, had its little stress fracture happen at Carowinds. This is the hyper model, so about a hundred feet shorter, um, and this is a stress point as well, a turning stress point. As you can see here, there is welding going on, and this is the drop, and there is welding going on there. So for a lot of enthusiasts. Parks don't typically have people that fly drones. Like, it's becoming a lot more common now, but it's not common to have someone document a daily, like, activity and coverage of their theme park from the drone. I have the ability to do that because I live close. And I've been able to kind of, like, learn things. And then, again, from having construction sources and all that, this is something that occurs on the regular. Um, rides need to be welded regularly. Every year at minimum, especially these older B&Ms, as they get older, they require more welding. And it's a very normal thing. City sky rises, the CN Tower, um, office buildings, uh, like just even steel structures, cell towers. They all require welding and maintenance, preventative maintenance to prevent fractures. And occasionally they occur. And with a ride like a B&M, they are designed to handle... Uh, overly designed to handle flaws that might occur like that. Yes, if gone unchecked, it could have 
become more serious. But in the moment, no one was in immediate danger. Um, that part isn't to defend Cedar Fair. I just want to take away the fact that on the news they're saying, you know, if the guests hadn't reported, then, you know, those guests could have... No, that's not, that's not the case. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. I'm not sure how it went unchecked for a week, and I'm not going to discuss that. That's, that's on Carolyn's maintenance team um, to figure out. But as you can see in my footage here, Cedar Fair does put a lot of money patience, time, and resources into preventative maintenance to get their rides ready, checked, and rebuilt for the season. In fact, Wonderland had a lot of their rides refurbished this offseason and then completely reconstructed. It's a really serious high-cost um, maintenance routine for a park to do, and that is something that Wonderland has done, and other parks do that in the chain as well. Um, but here, as you can see, it looks like I'm covering Tundra Twister, but you're going to see a white boom go up and you're going to see it. I don't get the whole thing because I didn't realize until I got home and checked the footage, but they're going to go check the support columns on Yukon Strikers drop. So in today's footage, you're about to see Leviathan after this, you've seen them go check and weld Behemoth. Now they're about to go check and weld Yukon Striker. And then after this, they're going to go check and weld Leviathan support columns and Leviathan, um, not to give too much tea, but Leviathan had something that need, required welding as well um, before the park opened. And again, the maintenance team and the maintenance checks and preventative maintenance was able to catch all this. So if anyone is questioning Cedar Fair being trustworthy with your safety, I can tell you, if you were to interview my mom about how much of a hypochondriac I am, I am afraid to get in airplanes. I don't like being up on top of the CN Tower. I'm afraid of eating certain foods. I'm afraid of everything and anything that can hurt me. And I ride the rides at Canada's Wonderland very comfortably. And I feel and trust Wonderland with my entire safety. And that continues on to Cedar Fair's parks as well. And that speaks volumes um, for myself, because I know you guys don't know that that saying doesn't help you guys um, make a decision based off of that at all. But let's talk about what possibly could have gone wrong. So there's a couple of things, and I'm not saying this is what went wrong, but based off of the conversations that I've had today, um, there are, are many things that could go wrong. One, it could have just been a small hairline fracture, which occurs on every attraction at every theme park in the world. And it is up to the maintenance and the off season checks to catch those. Um, you'll see a lot of that occur on suspended coasters like Vortex, Iron Dragon, and um, uh, why am I forgetting the name of the one at Kings Island? But that one as well. Um, so those those coaster models get a lot of stress fractures all the time, and they're caught all the time and rewelded and reworked. Um, another attraction that gets a lot of stress fractures are B and M's, um, and I'm not sure about Intamins because my park doesn't have Intamins. But those attractions get welding very commonly, um, and you know there are machines that can detect that, there are people's eyes that can detect that, and there's the teams that work the rides that can detect that as well. Um, so that's what it comes down to in terms of catching these things and fixing them, but. What can cause it is weather, um, high forces, uh, footings, uh, in terms of there's footage I'm actually going to use, uh, and this is how I know that, um, Yukon Striker, uh, when it was built, had a footing that wasn't built correctly, or it was just not designed due to the soil type in that location. And again, they were able to operate the ride by adding a slight modification to it until they could get to it in the off season and completely fix the footing and redesign it to better suit the soil. And if you have a bobbing, um, so here's the fix, there's the bracing they added. If you have a bobbing um, footing, it, uh, it can lead to things. But And so essentially, one of the options that could be going on or have happened at Fury is if any of the footings shifted, they're bobbing, they're not designed 100% correctly to uh, distribute the forces of the ride. Uh, again, I am not the one that knows all this information. I am just broken telephone passing on information that I've heard from, you know, my little birdies in the industry. Um, and that could 
that could lead to it as well, um, especially timing of the fracture. The ride isn't new, so if it was just due to forces of the ride, then um, it, it would have happened sooner, uh, is what I was told. And on top of that, there is one other factor. They did operate the ride during Winterfest, so that could have been a factor as well, but that is what the surveying company will be able to tell the park and the chain. Um, so what you're going to want to look for is, is running the ride in colder temperatures, which I don't think this is going to be the case because Canada's Wonderland rides them, runs them up until zero degrees Celsius and they haven't had any problems like that. Um, and I don't know how cold it gets in Carowinds when they're running this ride during Winterfest. Um, but that's option one. I don't think that's too likely. I think option two is really likely and it's going to come down to the footing. Um, so I'd keep an eye on the footings. Uh, of this ride um, and again Cedar Fair uh, from what I know from Carowinds fans only definitely check them out on Facebook and all social media uh, they're already analyzing the ride the Cedar Fair has had this company come in really quickly they're surveying the ride they're looking for any more damage um, which will help them figure out what's area of the ride is specifically causing this um, and then we'll get a better answer there so I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume based off of what conversations I've had is this is gonna be a footing issue and not mo not very likely that it's a stress issue. Um, the third option is it's it was a hairline fracture, which happens all the time at every theme park in the world, and unfortunately it just made it past these checks that you see on the screen right now, um, the machines and then the pre seasonal maintenance checks with the. Um, the welders so there is a chance that that could have been it and then it grew over time which we did kind of see some evidence of where a week ago there was a photo of a, a not a hairline fracture a fracture that then turned into a complete decapitation of the support structure there but um that's essentially all i can provide there i this video the purpose of it was for me to provide my understanding and context from my home park and flying my drone every day and watching cedar fairs practices with maintenance um, and defend the chain that they do do their due diligence in maintaining their rides and that this was honestly at the end of the day i'm you know I'm going to vouch for them that this was probably just a one-off, you know, overlook or mistake. It's going to happen. It happens a lot more than you guys think. For example, um, you know, you're driving your car and your suspension goes or something like that goes, even though you do your regular maintenance on your car. Um, things just happen to go. And it's just a part of the industry. It's transport industry has the same issues. Um, everything does. So, Again, this is just a one-off, and because of social media and all that, it's blowing up, and unfortunately, it is going to look really bad on Carowinds, and, you know, Cedar Fair is going to have to come out with a statement that ensures everyone's safety, and if they need any help, I have the footage for them of them doing their due diligence in maintaining their rides and attractions, but I'm a different park, so, but nonetheless, I just wanted to come out kind of like clear the air. I know a lot of enthusiasts right now are kind of panicking. Who's at fault? Is it Cedar Fair? Is it Carowinds? Is it B&M? Is it the construction company? Um, the, f the concrete company, the cement company that pours the footings? There's a lot of different people at play here. So I think we just have to sit back, wait for more information to come out about what exactly went wrong before we jump to any conclusions. We cannot assume it's the maintenance team. We cannot assume it's Cedar Fair. And we cannot assume it's B&M. Um, and I'm going to tell you actually the least likely option here is it's B&M's fault. Uh, the, the manufacturer of the ride over designs their rides and this has nothing to do with B&M in my personal opinion and from the conversations I've had today with uh, my uh, sources out in the actual construction industry. So um, this is 100% I'm going to predict a construction or design flaw with the footing um, and the footing map of this coaster and the so or the soil mixed in with that um, so we'll have to wait and see but thanks for watching today's video hopefully this provided any context um, uh, i just wanted to come out and say something because i actually do benefit from having some really awesome sources in the construction industry anyways thanks so much have a good one guys bye